Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for today's discussion, in fact, is a conclusion on shielding effectiveness. There will be two series, A and B series. By now, I guess everyone should know that shielding effectiveness actually depends on three factors. Number one, absorption. Number two, reflection. And number three, multiple reflection. Today, I'm going to illustrate when absorption will be the dominant factor for shielding effectiveness. I'm also going to illustrate when reflection will be the dominant factor for shielding effectiveness. In fact, absorption and reflection actually play a different role at different frequency. We will take a closer look later on. Next, I'm going to discuss when we can discount away this multiple reflection. We know that multiple reflection actually cause a degradation on shielding effectiveness. We're going to study when we can omit the calculation of multiple reflection. This will be the part 27 series discussion. The earlier on discussion on EMC, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you are keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Guys, I really need your help in order to improve the service of this channel. Thank you so much, guys. This is what we have discussed extensively. Shooting effectiveness is a combination of absorption, reflection, and multiple reflection. In this slide, I'm going to show you all the formula that are required to calculate the overall shielding effectiveness. Let's start the ball rolling by showing the absorption formula. These are the two formula that are required to calculate the absorption loss. Firstly, we need to calculate the skin depth. After calculate the skin depth, we need to substitute the skin depth into this equation in order to obtain the absorption loss. Next, reflection. Under reflection, there are actually three sets of formula. Okay, when the source is dominated by electric field, under near field, you need to use this first set of equation to compute the reflection loss. When your source is dominated by magnetic field, you need the second equation to calculate the reflection loss. Last but not least, when your field is considered far field, you need the third equation to compute the reflection loss. Next, multiple reflection loss. I have introduced you this formula. Multiple reflection loss actually cause a degradation on shielding effectiveness. And later on, we're going to study why we can omit this equation. Before I continue, you realize that for absorption, regardless of electric field, magnetic field, or far field, the formula is still intact. Same as multiple reflection loss. However, for reflection, based on the source of interference, whether is it dominated by electric field, magnetic field, or far field, you need to choose the different sets of formula. Let's take a close look on this reflection loss for electric field. You can see that if your source is dominated by electric field, you actually has an easier task because under reflection for electric field, it actually provides a form of protection. Can you see over here? 322 dB of reflection loss. Wow, this number is a very big number. And hence, because of this big number, 322, we can actually omit away this multiple reflection loss. Because typically, 
multiple refraction loss is in terms of 2 or 3 dB. Hence, this number is so much smaller as compared to 322. So therefore, for electric field, we don't include the multiple refraction calculation. Next, let's move on to magnetic field. Again, this is the refraction loss for magnetic field. If your source is disturbed by magnetic field, then you have a bigger concern because under refraction for magnetic field, you don't have much protection, just 14.6 dB. Okay, this 14.6 dB is also not significantly higher than the multiple refraction loss. And hence, for magnetic field, you still need to consider the multiple refraction loss. The only chances that you can omit this multiple refraction loss is because the absorption loss is more than 10 dB. So let's say the absorption loss now is 10 dB, 10 plus 14.6, which is 24.6. Hence, with 24.6, you can actually omit the B term because 24.6 is many, many times bigger than the B term. So the only chances to drop this multiple refraction under magnetic field is when the absorption loss is more than 10 dB. Let's focus on far field. Far field is quite similar with electric field. The protection is 168 dB, which is quite significant. This 168 dB is also many, many times bigger than multiple refraction. And hence, for far field, we actually omit away the multiple refraction formula. Later on, I'm going to show it to you when absorption will be the dominant factor for shielding effectiveness and also when reflection will be the dominant factor for shielding effectiveness. Let's discuss on the overall shielding effectiveness for far field. The total loss for pain wave in far field is a combination of the absorption and reflection loss. The multiple reflection correction term B is normally neglect for far field. Since the refraction loss is so high and the correction term is small. So this is what I have described to you on the previous slide. Okay, let's take a look on this diagram. This diagram is frequency versus shielding effectiveness. Let's take a look on refraction first. Okay, you can see from here, refraction actually reduce when the frequency increase. So why this happen? Let's do a revisit on this equation here. Okay, when frequency actually increase, can you see that the refraction loss actually reduce? Therefore, when frequency increase, the refraction loss actually decrease. Next, let's take a look on absorption. You can see that under absorption loss at low frequency, they basically provide no mean of protection. Absorption loss actually come into play with higher frequency. Okay, when frequency actually increase, you can see that absorption loss also increase. Again, let's take a look on the absorption loss formula. When frequency increase, my skin depth reduce. And when my skin depth reduce, my absorption loss increase. Therefore, when frequency increase, my absorption loss also increase. Last but not least, let's take a look on the total shielding effectiveness. You can see under low frequency, the total shielding effectiveness is dominated by reflection. And when frequency increase, absorption loss becomes the dominant factor as explained over here. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.